G'day guys and gal, the waking of Gilliman signified a big shift in the setting of 40k. For years, it was so drab. Every victory mankind achieved only served to prolong its inevitable downfall. Everyone was depressed, and if the demons didn't get ya, then the Tyranids eventually would. Then BAM! The glorious Aryan overlord himself has a car battery hooked up to his balls, and with a mighty zap that would make Frankenstein himself proud, he awoke from his deathly coma. Just quietly, I can't even begin to imagine how sore this man's back would have been. Stiffer than a ferry at a zoo. As you can imagine, a loyalist Primarch re-entering the setting for the first time in 10,000 years caused a bit of a uh, ruckus, and a wild plethora of reactions, ranging from euphoric joy all the way down to seething rage. Before we get started, November, the herald of the end of lockdowns in my country. Hence, the return of the holy trinity of bees. Beaches, bitches, and beers. Freedom feels good, despite what my liver might tell you. But there is a way to achieve even greater levels of freedom by downloading Surfshark VPN. What's a VPN? A VPN is a software that basically allows you to teleport your internet and IP into another country, allowing you to bypass shitty licensing deals and government firewalls whilst doubling your libido. Or maybe that's just all the Viagra I've been chowing down lately. Isn't that illegal? I don't know, I'm not a lawyer, but it doesn't really matter, because when you use a VPN, your identity is completely covered. So why choose Surfshark? After all, there are a few VPNs out there. Easy. It's incredibly simple and straightforward to use. Like one click and bam, no worries. But the biggest draw is definitely just how cheap it is. Using my link in code below MajorKill, you can get 83% off and 3 months free. And if somehow you're not frothing your new freedoms, then Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee. Cheers to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over how each of the main characters and factions reacted to Gilliman's revival. We'll also look at why they may have reacted the way that they did. Let's get into it. The most standout thing about Gilliman's revival is that it was wildly unexpected. Absolutely nobody foresaw it happening, so it was a total surprise to even the most powerful and accurate fortune tellers. It also completely altered and changed all the galaxy's prophecies and future predictions, throwing the setting into genuine doubt for the first time in a while. Like previously, all anyone saw was that eventually Chaos would win, but with Gilliman's return, it's thrown a spanner in the works, and now nobody really knows exactly what is going to happen. As such, everyone, even the Emperor, was surprised. So firstly, how did the Imperium and its people react? Well, to nobody's surprise, everyone was pretty stoked that a demigod son of the Emperor who wasn't a demon or a weirdo had woken up. The Ecclesiarchy got all religious about it, as they do, which made Gilliman pretty uncomfortable. However, whilst everyone was all smiles and waves, a number of powerful and influential members of the Imperium were not too happy. See, they held massive swathes of power, and the return of Gilliman basically threatened their sphere of influence. Hence, numerous High Lords planned a rebellion against Gilliman, which was pretty fucking retarded, but hey, this is the Imperium we're talking about. Gilliman was able to slap down that rebellion with less than a flick of a dick, before taking complete control of the Imperium. In case you were wondering, Gilliman reacted very poorly to the Imperium. He basically said it was so shit that Horace may as well have won. Others in the Imperium, especially in the Inquisition, were notably concerned about how he was resurrected. After all, he basically got queefed on by the prophet of an Eldar death god whilst getting his nuts tasered by a Magos who has been repeatedly accused of tech heresy in order for Gilliman to wake up. It's not clear if his resurrection method is public knowledge or not, but there would be many who suspect, with the Puritan Inquisitors definitely having an issue with it. However, it's kind of like knowing a dark secret about the popular kid at school. One day you decide to share the dark secret and say that the cool kid isn't actually cool, but turns out the cool kid is so cool that even leaking his dark secret does nothing but turn everyone against you. Same situation here, except instead of your classmates telling you to fuck off, you'd have G-Man's big ass blue fist caving your skull in no time. The custodies reacted pretty much how you would expect. They were like, cool man, daddy loves us more. In seriousness, Gilliman arrived on Terra during a huge battle against Cornite forces and he kinda saved the day, so the Custodes did have respect for him for that. It was also made obvious that Gilliman had the Emperor's blessing, hence the Custodes were happy to engage with Gilliman and take his suggestions on board. The support from the Custodes is actually what gives Gilliman so much legitimacy as Lord of the Imperium. If they told him to get fucked, it probably would have resulted in a civil war. 
The Space Marines overwhelmingly reacted positively, even the ones that you would expect to be a bit shaky. The Black Templars, Blood Angels, and others received Gilliam with open arms. It helps that he brought them Primaris reinforcements and High Key saved the Blood Angels. The Dark Angels, in a moment of spurginess, thought Gilliam was coming to punish them for the Fallen, hence they genuinely considered firing on his ship and killing him. Fortunately, they didn't do that, and they ended up gladly chatting to the returned Primarch. It goes without saying that, yes, the Sisters of Battle collectively finger blasted at the news of Gilliman's return. They piss their panties whenever they see a custodian, so imagine how they would feel seeing a Primarch. So for the Imperium, the vast majority of people were stoked with G-Man's return, with only a small handful of petty people being mad and then quickly being killed. What about the Emperor? How did the big man himself react to the return of his son? Well, it's complicated. The Emperor's consciousness is extremely broken and fragmented. He's incredibly bipolar and schizophrenic right now, and it takes a lot of effort for him to pull himself together and do something deliberately. When Gilliman spoke with the Emperor, he remarked that it was like speaking to a star, and that the Emperor's humanity had been stripped bare to reveal the true creature beneath. The Emperor regarded Gilliman with the same enthusiasm that a blacksmith would upon finding his favourite tool that had been lost for a long time. So whilst it was a cold reaction, it was positive, as the Emperor basically gave Gilliman his blessing to go fuck shit up. Later on, when Gilliman is poisoned by Morty and dies, the Emperor possesses Gilliman, has a full psychotic breakdown, and then eventually pulls himself together enough to deliver some sick burns to Nurgle. So yeah, the Emperor is happy that Gilliman is back, he just has a pretty spastic way of showing it. So how did Chaos react? After all, the return of Gilliman kind of brought their victory to a screeching halt. Abaddon was pretty mad. He was celebrating the fall of Cadia when he got news that it looked as if the survivors of Cadia were going to try res G-Man. Q, record stop. <laughs> Celebration ended, and Abby beelined for Ultramar to try and stop it. He was unsuccessful, and now probably feels insecure that the Imperium's War Master has a solid 3-4 to four feet on him. The traitor Primarchs all reacted in a similar manner. They were all super condescending and mocked Gilliman while secretly having a bitch about him. Mostly, they just try to kill him. First, Fulgrim sent an agent to place a crown on Gilliman's head that would corrupt anyone who wore it, but G-Man took it off pretty quickly without much issue, which pissed Fulgrim off. Magnus then attacked G-Man on his way back to Terra and the two dueled. Magnus talked mad shit, got his jaw broken, and was sent screaming back to the warp. Then Morty gave G-Man a go, and despite doing good damage, the Emperor possessed G-Man, told Morty he was a pussy, and then spanked his ass back to hell. Regardless if Chaos laughed or frowned, they reacted very strongly. Every Chaos God began furiously planning G-Man's downfall, whilst their greatest champions and demons did the same thing. With only a few years of his return, Gilliman had been attacked by exalted greater demons of every deity, as well as multiple traitor Primarchs. Chaos initially may have reacted with glee at the pathetic new challenge that had been thrown at their feet, but after Gilliman pretty much beat all of their champions and reclaimed most of the Imperium via the Indominus Crusade, they are a bit more panicky, especially since the Big E has woken up. How about the Xenos? Well, the Elder were instrumental in Gilliman's return. They brought him back as they knew he would greatly strengthen the Imperium, hence giving the Elder more time to figure out how to wake up Yned and take down Slanesh. In their arrogance, they thought that they would be able to manipulate and control Gilliman and basically use him as a puppet to achieve their own ends. Like, G-Man's armor, the armor of fate, acts like a life support system, and the G-Man is supposed to not be able to live without it. But the opposite happened. Gilliman outplayed the Elder, and it made him seem like they were his puppet, which is one of the reasons why the Elder Imperial Alliance kind of ended and hasn't been addressed much since. Gilliman also trained himself to be able to live without the armor of fate, so he kind of removed the Elder's leverage. The Dark Elder haven't really reacted to him much yet, but they don't really react to anything, so no surprise there. Sadly, we haven't seen what the Orcs think about Bobby G yet, but it's safe to assume they would be over the moon with the return of a new big and fighty Umi. The setting of 40k really is an Orcs world, we're all just living in it. The Tao have not yet seen or even heard of Gilliman yet. When he eventually comes past their way, they'll probably think he's the Emperor that all their Goo Vesa keep talking about. I imagine Gilliman would be able to strike up a truce with them pretty easily, but considering he has more important problems right now, it might be a while before we see them interact. The Necrons have also been pretty passive in their reaction. Out of all the races, even the Eldar, the Necrons are the most arrogant, so even the return of a Primarch wouldn't phase them too much. I'd actually be pretty keen to see the Silent King and Gilliman face off. 
only for the Silent King to win the battle and have G-Man at his mercy. Then G-Man gets spared because the Silent King needs him to keep the Imperium running, hence giving the galaxy a better chance at beating the Nids. Not only would this introduce the Silent King as an Avengers level threat, but it would also show that G-Man isn't this unbeatable Mary Sue. The Tyranids haven't reacted to G-Man yet either, as the only real interaction they've had is G-Man orbitably bombing them during the devastation of Baal. When Gilliman inevitably fights and kills the Swarm Lord, it might perk the hive mind's interest in acquiring his DNA. I think it'd be sweet if the Swarm Lord is able to take a bite out of G-Man before dying, hence the next Swarm Lord that is made has Primarch DNA in it, and is actually a raid boss to fight. Fuck, I'm really pumping out some good narrative right now. GW, I'll take a 15% royalty, cheers mate. The unfortunate reality is, is that the Indominatus Crusade has been almost solely focused on Gilliman fighting Chaos, so he hasn't had the opportunity to clash with various notable Xenos yet. Almost a good thing, because five years from now when he eventually clashes with the Silent King, I can make another video on it while collecting all my royalties. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more reactful content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.